I guess, put together a sample set of data for exercising, making some of the decisions that we need to make as far as how we're handling the situation where a user is trying to edit an event, um, specifically when they're editing the date and time. So each event in the spreadsheet is going to have a task and an ID, a timestamp of when it ended, uh, and, and a duration. Technically, it also has a start point, but that's just a calculation of the end point, end time, minus the duration. So for this exercise, uh, we're just going to hide that in the background. It's a calculation that can be done after the fact. And then the new date and time that the user is entering, is intending, uh, their their attempt. We're going to say it that way because in certain circumstances, we're, we're not going to be able to change the date and time to their intended new date and time, but we'll have to manage that. So, so this column is... Um, and the cell in red is for the purpose of depicting the user's entered date and time. And then uh, the code is written to manage taking that intended date and time, going through the, the sample set of data, and uh, our unique case rules of how to handle start, and if it's before, if it's the first event or the end event, and generating a new set of data based on the determination of how to handle this intended change in date and time of that specific event. All right. So and, and th so so this is depicting columns H through K are depicting uh, what that data set will look like after this change. And so we, the the goal is a a tool for working through the different scenarios, uh, different possibilities of what a user might enter. Uh, and the data set that might be there, and what is, how do we, what is our intended output? How do we handle those circumstances? So, uh, and then I have uh, seven different cases, uh, special cases, based on the uniqueness of, of our data set and the kind of the rules of how we're tracking time. Um, and then uh, some additional tasks that we're going to need to be able to handle, uh, such as like, like to de delete an event altogether. What happens if an event is deleted altogether? Um, what if we want to assign a different task to the event? And what if we would want to assign an event to a different project. So it'll it'll take this event out of this project altogether and place it in a different project. And uh, how do we handle that? All right. So I'm gonna work through just uh, some simple, start here in the middle, as a, just to get familiar with my, my terms maybe. Uh, this task, task two, uh, event ID of three um, hap uh, occurred originally at 3.13.20 and a duration of 10 minutes. So 10 minutes before that was the previous event at 13.10. So this is this event was calculated with, with a 10 minute duration. Um, so the user wants to change this event and this for, for this for the example, this example uh, to a time of 1435. So this event ID 3 
well, technically, when we're, when a user is done with editing this event, should happen between um, event ID 10 and ID 11. 1435. Uh, so the durations need to reflect that change. Um, and, and for this exercise, I'm not going to move the data. So it's not going to change order. It needs to stay basically this UID uh, defines a location for that event. And that location can't change because we're sharing with other users or, or we're sharing it with other feeds. So, so the data can't move. Um, instead, it needs to remain where it is, but all calculations need to be uh, based on its new chronological location, uh, even though it's physical location or its data point location isn't changing. Okay, so uh, this submit button is, is simply uh, the trigger for this code. Um, so we have a new date timestamp for event ID number 3, uh, 1435. Uh, so the output data set now has changed based on that change. So the user intends for event ID number 3 to have a new date time of 1435. So I'm going to try to walk you, walk you through what this data set now represents. Uh, technically, or, or, or chronologically, event number three doesn't ha now happens, occurs, uh, between 10 and 11. So the duration for event ID number four is going to be 20 minutes, of meaning from 13.30, the duration of this event is now calculated based on the ending date time of event ID number two. So 13.10 to 13.30 is a duration of 20 minutes. It's as though this event doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it's really, this event is now calculated, its duration is calculated based on uh, the previous event, which is no longer event ID number three, it's now event ID number two. Event ID number, ID number three, the duration for this event is now calculated based on its new location, which is after event ID number 10. So its duration from 1435 to 1430 is a duration of five minutes, and that also means that event ID number 11 has a new duration. It was 10 minutes originally from 1440 to 1430. It now has a duration of five minutes from 1440 to 1435. Okay. Ooh, so that was a simple one. Um, just a simple... In fact, let, let's back up. I'm going to back up and, and go to an even simpler Let's say it doesn't change order. Instead, we're going to change just the time. So from 1320 to 1325, which means that the order shouldn't change. It's uh, simply the durations will change. So when, it, when our script, in this case, uh, goes through that sequence of events, this data set, it tends to change the date from date time from 1320 to 1325. The new data set is, is simply a change in duration. The, the events are going to stay chronologically in the same order. Um, and the new duration of ID 4 is going to be 5 minutes from 1330 to 1325. And the new duration for ID 3 is now 15 minutes from 1325 to 1310. All right, so I've, um, these are some simple cases, special cases, new position is last. So if we're taking, I'm going to call this the old position, 
and then the new location would be this data set chronologically uh, ordered. So if, if we are to highlight this area and sort by range based on J, which is uh, the daytime, uh, what would its new new position? So these terms meaning new position is last. So if I take this event and his new position is last, that means it comes after 1450, which is in this at this point, the last event, um, what happens? So let's make it 1455. So what we're going to do, we're going to run our script based on the new intended endpoint of, of event ID number four. This new endpoint should be last. And really, uh, the only uniqueness to this um, change, as opposed to it ending in the middle of, of the sequence, is that uh, we need to be able to handle the circumstance where there is no event after the new location. So, so, so the new chronological position of the event is the last event or most recent event. And so it doesn't have an event that occurs after it. We, in, in a, in another, uh, in, in most, in a, in a typical or on, we need to be able to handle the situation where there's an event that happens after it. But in this case, uh, there, there is no event that happens that occurs after the new location. Um, and so that becomes a special case. New data set. ID number four is now 1455, which occurs five minutes after, a duration of five minutes after ID number 12. ID number 12, this duration doesn't change because it's based on uh, ID 11, 1440, which hasn't changed. The event after, in this case, event ID number five has a new duration of 20 minutes based on 1340 to 1320 because this event ID number four now happens as the, it ends up being the, the last event. All right. New position is first. All right, well, we're going to talk a little bit more later about the start event because the, the just the way we're building our data models for each project uh, for tracking time, the first event, I'm going to say yeah, it, it's my understanding that the first event can't change. I'm, I'm treating the way I, I, I broke down my strategy and, and, uh, created the code for, for, for just managing this data set, the first event can has to remain the first event. Its time can change, but it can only change uh, in such a way that it still remains the first event. Um, it's, it's, it locks in the project. It's, it gives a project an anchor of where all time is then calculated uh, from that point. And so um, we're going to need to to keep that anchor. Its location sequentially can't change. So this, this special case, the new position is first means that the user is entering a date and time uh, that tries to put a new event at the most, at the oldest, or as the first event. Um, so if I change, if the user tries to change this event from 1330 to 1255, which would make it now the first event in in the project, um, we need to be able to handle that circumstance. And the rule 
the way I handled it, basically. Do nothing. So so we're gonna skip skip through and make no change. Or that, that's that's my intention anyway. Uh, if if the new location, um, if the user is attempting to to move an event to make it now, it would then be the first event. Um, and the way I handled it is there should be no change. And so that's what happens is that at the end, if, if this information is entered for this event, nothing changes. Maybe there's a, a, a message that indicates that uh, the start date needs to be changed uh, in order to make this edit or something to that effect. All right. So the old position is last. So what if uh, the existing most recent event, um, the, the user's attempting to edit the most recent event? And really, the only complication there is that, uh, again, there is no event that occurs after it. So there isn't a calculation made for, the, for changing a duration that occurs after the event that we're changing. Uh, so let's exercise this a little bit. Um, start with no order change, just a time change. In this case, uh, the order shouldn't change, simply the duration. And that's what happens. Uh, it just changes by five minutes, so it's now 15 minutes instead of 10 minutes. Now, if we change the order, so now we'll have a new end event. Uh, the new ending event will be 1440 will be ID 11. Maybe this time what I'll do is uh, we'll just take a minute and sort this by date time so you can kind of see if this event if this change is made if the user makes the change that we've depicted uh, moving event ID number 12 the date time from 1450, the new date time is 1435. Uh, this would be the resulting chrono chronological sequence um, where now event number 12, ID number 12, happens between 10 and 11, and the durations uh, are calculated to reflect that change. So, so from 1440 to 1435 as a duration of five minutes. 1435 to 1430 is five minutes, and the rest remain the same. So that's how we're going to handle how how it, it appears that we need to handle it's a circumstance where the user is uh, changing um, what I'm calling the old position. The original position is is the last or most recent position. Um, how to handle that? So, what if the first event is moved? So now, if the user wanted, wants to change the first event, so when, when the project started, um, they can change, the user should be able to change that. In this case, this 1300 should be able to change all the way up to just before 1310, and then it should be able to go back in time. Um, they should be able to change that. Uh, timestamp to anywhere before that. But, but let's just leave it at 1435. Um, basically, it should be an error, not an error, but a uh, an indication that the user should um, that the start date needs to remain at the beginning. 
but basically what's going to happen is nothing. It's going to, uh, they're not, the script is not going to change any data uh, because the user is attempting to move the start date to a location that would no longer be the start date. So let's make it uh, just a, a small shift forward. Um, which shouldn't change sequence, so it should be allowed. Um, it's just a simple duration change. So event ID number two has a, a new duration calculation of five minutes. The duration of a start should never change. Duration of a start should always be zero. All right, so now if we want to move this the start event to uh, a time even earlier in the past. We need to be able to handle that circumstance. Uh, it's, uh, again, just changes that timestamp from 1300 to 12.05 and recalculates the duration of event ID number two from 10 to one, an hour and five minutes. Right? New position is before a start event. So for these next two, the next three, we're talking, um, for, for this exercise, I'm talking about a start event that occurs um, at a time other than the first start event of the project. So the user has a start event that occurs in the midst of the project. How do we handle that? Um, so the, the, the first scenario is a new, the new position is before a start event. So if I'm, if the user is moving, we'll say, ID number two as a time timestamp right now currently of 1310 uh, we're going to move that to just before a start event uh, which would be 1355 and really the the only check here is that we need to make sure that start events are always a duration of zero that's really all that needs to happen here is that after this change is made, the start event duration should still be zero because, uh, and that's the case. We're calculating, in most cases, we need to recalculate, or a typical case, we need to recalculate the duration of the event that happens after its original position and the original and after its new position, after it changes position. The event that occurs after that normally needs to be recalculated, but if that event is a start event, it needs to remain zero. So that's what happens here. This new, let me just sort these quick so you can see it. That ID number two now happens directly before a start event but the start event is still zero. Um, the duration, our calculations need to make sure it doesn't, that they don't touch the duration of the start event. There remains zero. There's a, a reset of the calculation, calculating of durations, tracking of time. Okay. And then what if the old position is before a start event. So this is again similar. Um, that event that occurs just before a start so that the new um, chronological location of, in this case, event number six moves so that it's no longer uh, just before the start event. We need to ensure that this, again, this start event doesn't get touched.
uh, the duration needs to remain zero. Uh, so we'll just leave it the same for now. We're going to move it a little bit in time to make sure that works. So this isn't a sequential change. This is uh, simply a time change, just a duration change of 15 from 10 minutes to 15 minutes uh, because of this change. Again, the start event is not touched. It remains at zero. And then if we're going to change the order to, we'll say, 14. case that event is moving from the timestamp of 1350 to 1435 so it's not going to happen between event 10 and 11 and the durations are recalculated based on that new sequential location chronological location um, but we need to make sure again, that the start event isn't touched, so the duration remains zero. Uh, 